Hi, my name is Kmot. This podcast is brought to you by Majua TVET College and it specifically relates to financial accounting and for, for South African TVET colleges. I'm going to tackle the income statement on a piecemeal basis. For that reason, I'd like to refer to this as part one of 3.1. I've selected to do a question paper which was written 10th of June 2016. I'm hoping that at the end of the entire presentation, students will be able to draft the income statement, specifically at the end of this presentation, which will take into account, amongst other things, the calculation of costs, cost of sales. I'm hoping that students will be able to calculate the cost of sales under the periodic inventory system. I'd like to take you to question three of the question paper. It's essentially how question three looks like. There you go, we're, dealing question, we're doing question three. It relates to Zungu fashion suppliers on 28 February 2015. You're required by requirement 3.1 to draw up the income statement for the year ended 28 February 2015. I don't want to keep this presentation long because it might be confusing. Therefore, I'm only going to focus on the calculation of gross profit. Firstly, I want to make you aware that we're given what we call the pre-adjusted trial balance. And it clearly distinguishes between what we call the balance sheet section and the nominal section and the nominal account section. As a rule of thumb, all items that are reflected on the nominal section will be taken into account in the preparation of the income statement. However, there could be other items that are taken into account in calculating certain amounts that have an impact on the preparation of the income statement. I'm going to use an Excel spreadsheet to show you how we do the income statement. Let's quickly go to that spreadsheet. There you go. Please, it shouldn't confuse you. I've magnified it so that you can be able to see exactly where we're at. That's essentially how it looks like. It is the income statement relating to Zoom's fashion suppliers for the year ended 28 February 2015. Let's quickly see how amounts that we're going to take into account in calculating the gross profit. Firstly, under a nominal section, as you can clearly see, we provided with the amount of sales. I'm going to copy the amount of sales. I'm going to copy it there. I'm going to so it's a copy and paste. I'm just taking the description. And the next thing that we're going to take into account in determining what we call the gross profit, it's called cost of sales. Let's quickly go back to your question paper. We were specifically told that if you look under the note, specifically I'd like you to focus on the bullet point number two. We were specifically told that the stock taking is conducted as per the periodic inventory system. Remember, we clearly distinguish between the perpetual inventory system and the periodic inventory system. Under the perpetual inventory system, cost of sales is determined on a regular basis. So cost of sales can be determined at any stage. However, under the periodic system, uh, the business is not able to determine uh, the cost of sales for each and every item it sells. So the cost of sales would actually be have to be determined all the time and the business uh, sells its stock. To cut the story short, under the periodic system, we're going to calculate the cost of sales. And I'm going to show you how we go about in calculating the cost of sales under the periodic system. Before I even show you, let's determine the amount relating to sales. Uh, we are given uh, that sales... At this point in time, it's an amount of 72750. We quickly need to go to our adjustments and see whether there's any adjustment impacting the calculation of sales. Adjustment number one doesn't impact the calculation of sales. Number two speaks about bad debts. The third one, it doesn't impact the calculation of sales. The fourth one, it doesn't because it speaks about stocks. Um, the fifth one, it doesn't. It relates to courage on goods sold. And the sixth, uh, it relates to water and electricity. And the seventh adjustment relates to interest on fixed deposit. 
The eighth adjustment relates to interest on loan, and that adjustment relates to rent received, and the last adjustment relates to depreciation. So now that we're happy that uh, amount of sales doesn't have any adjustment, we're going to go to the nominal section and see whether there's any uh, item that we need to take into account, like your sales returns in determining the amount of sales. Purchases, credit allowance, rent income, discount allowed, discount received. It doesn't look like there's anything that affects the calculation of sales. Therefore, it's a copy and paste exercise. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it there. There you go, we're done. Now we're going to calculate, we're going to determine what we call cost of sales. Cost of sales is determined by taking the opening stock, opening stock. We're also going to take purchases. Remember, we're going to add purchases to the value of opening stock. Purchases. This is where I'm gonna stop. Let's go to our information and check whether we do have opening stock. Normally, opening stock will be classified under your balance sheet section. And let's quickly go check. There's the value of stock. And it is opening stock because we're doing books for 28 February 2015. And we specifically told that that's a stock for 1 March 2015. So that's our opening stock. There isn't any adjustment relating to the calculation of opening stock. Remember, we went through adjustments and if I remember correctly, there wasn't any specific adjustment affecting the, that amount. So I'm going to take that amount as is. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it there. There you go. That's my opening stock. Next in line, it's purchases. We're given that amount of purchases. However, remember your creditors allowances reduces the value of uh, purchases. Creditors allowance, it's more like um, a, a discount that a business is given by its uh, suppliers therefore it reduces the value of your purchases so i'm going to take that value of 208 i'm going to say equals to 20800 i want to reduce this by the value of credit allowances i'm going to take the 7250 there you go 7250 that that amount basically 7250 7250 to arrive at the value of purchases that we're going to take into account in determining cost of sales. Moving along swiftly, let's quickly go through the nominal section and see whether there are any other amounts that we're going to take into account in, in determining the cost of sales. None of those items, I've gone through those items. That item specifically relates to customs duty. Customs duty is taken into account in determining uh, the cost price relating to uh, goods um, Acquired. Therefore, I'm going to take it into account as it affects inventory. So, customs duty, the amount of customs duty, I'm going to copy the description. There weren't any adjustment uh, relating to the calculation of customs duty that we need to take into account. So, I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to paste it there. Moving along swiftly, let's go back there. The next item that we're going to take into account is courage on purchases. We must also take into account courage on purchases in determining the value of stocks. So I'm going to take it into account in calculating costs of sales. There you go. Courage on purchases. I'm just going to reduce this to courage on par so that it doesn't disturb you. Remember, it's courage on purchases. We're given an amount of 12,990. Uh, I quickly want to go to a transaction that could have related to uh, courage on purchases. Um, I saw that transaction. There you go. Please, guys, you must bear in mind the fact that it looks like it relates to courage on purchases, but it specifically relates to courage on goods sold. So it will impact the calculation of courage on sales. We're not going to take courage on sales in determination of the gross profit as courage on sales is an operating expense. So when we determine operating expenses we're going to take courage on sales into account and that transaction relates to courage on sales therefore it will impact the calculation or a determination of courage on sales so our courage on purchases is not affected by any of the adjustments i'm going to take that amount copy and paste copy i'm pasting it there the last amount we're going to less closing stock 
closing stock, closing inventory. Let's quickly go see what are we given closing inventory. I remember very well that transaction number four related to the closing inventory. Remember they had to do a stock, uh, physical stock taking to determine the value of uh, closing inventory. So that's essentially how you calculate your cost of sales under the periodic system. When you put it there, now we've determined the cost of sales under the periodic system. Remember we less cost of sale, we less uh, closing stock, so I need to insert a negative there. There you go. So this is exactly how we determine cost of sales under the um, periodic inventory system. If this was a perpetual inventory system, we would have been provided with the value of cost of sales. We wouldn't have had to undertake those steps to calculate the cost of sales. We're just going to make this sum of, we did the difficult work, so we're just going to make that sum of those cells. Enter. It will give us our cost of sales. There you go. That's our cost of sales. Remember, for us to determine the gross profit, I need to take that amount and deduct that amount. So I'm going to insert a negative there. There you go. So my cost of sales, I'm going to take my sales, deduct my cost of sales to determine my gross profit. I'm just going to say sum. I only want those two. There you go. That's my gross profit. Thank you. This is where I'm going to end this presentation. Next presentation, I'm going to deal with other income.